Okay. We are here for a surprise ring. Wait, aren't we reviewing shampoos? No, nope. show us your hair routine. Let's go. Like right now? Yes. <laughs> what am I supposed to show you? Like my my bathroom? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, all clear. Very clean. <laughs> Lucky. Okay, um, so let me show you my shampoos, I guess. Uh, I am using these two shampoos at the moment. Okay, uh, why two shampoos though? Most people only use one. Yeah, it's more for convenience sake. I alternate between the two, so if one runs out, and then I just use the other. Okay, but there's such a huge variety of shampoos out there, so how do you choose which one? Okay, so this one is sulfate free, and this one cleanses my scalp because I do get a lot of product buildup on my scalp. Uh, so these two have been working for me. There is a huge, head-scratching range of shampoos in the market. Apart from sulfate-free and purifying, there is moisturizing shampoo, vegan, organic, dry, and even powder shampoo. Do you know what dry shampoo means? It's dry. Dry shampoo for uh, dry scalp like using powder to wash your hair. Do you know what organic shampoo means? Um, I'm assuming it's just something that's more natural based. Yeah, using natural ingredients. Do you know how it does that? Organically. Do you know what sulfate free shampoo means? Yes, it's supposed to be more calming on the scalp. Yeah, less harsh. So most of you are as clueless as I am about the assortment of shampoos. In this episode of Talking Point, I investigate what's in all these different kinds of shampoos and if you could be using the wrong type for your hair all this while. This brings me to Priscilla, a pharmacist who has been using one of the shampoos I'm trying to demystify, volumizing shampoo. All right, we have all these shampoos here, but first of all, tell me, what does shampoo do? Shampoos are made up of a very, a very important ingredient called surfactant. Surfactant basically cleans our scalp. Muna, let me show you an analogy. Imagine this is a surfactant molecule. It has two parts. It has the water-loving part and the oil-loving part. And when you combine them with water, the oil-loving part will pick up the oil and dirt and the water-loving part will pick up the water. And because oil and water don't mix, an emulsion will be formed. And when you rinse your hair, the emulsion that carries the dirt and oil will be rinsed away. Actually, one of these is not an actual shampoo. Oh, which one? This one! Oh, that's the dry shampoo. This shampoo doesn't contain a surfactant, mm -hmm. which cleanses your hair. However, it does contain an ingredient known as starch that picks up oil and dirt on your hair. It's more suitable for travellers, but ultimately, it is still advised that you wash your hair regularly with a regular shampoo. So I cannot substitute a regular shampoo with a dry shampoo? That is correct. So then, are dry shampoos the same as powder shampoos? No, they are not. Powder shampoo works like a normal shampoo. Mm -hmm. You just need to add water to it and it will lather. Oh, and it will cleanse your scalp and hair as yep, well? Yeah, that's correct. Vegan shampoo does not contain any ingredients that are from animals mm. and they do not go through any animal testing. So doesn't that make all shampoos vegan? Because what shampoos have ingredients from animals? Oh no, actually some ingredients are derived from animals. For example, steric acid. What is steric acid? It makes your hair soft, shiny and glossy. This one is one I personally use, the purifying shampoo. And at one point, I was using it every day. Is that okay? Purifying shampoos are sometimes known as clarifying shampoos. And these contains high level of surfactants, which deeply cleanses your hair. Mm -hmm. If you have dry scalp, you may not want to use it every day. It is harsher than the regular shampoo and it may strip off the natural oil further. 
Okay, then how about sulfate-free shampoo? That's another kind of shampoo that I use regularly. Sulfate is a type of surfactant that you find a lot in shampoos. For example, sodium laureth sulfate or sodium laurel sulfate, you see a lot in shampoos. But why replace sulfate though? Is it because it's really bad for our scalp? No, it actually depends on your scalp condition. Some people may be allergic to sulfate. Some people with dry and sensitive scalp may find it harsh. Right, so that's why they go for sulfate-free because it's something that's gentler on their scalp. That is correct. But if there's no sulfate, then how does the shampoo cleanse the hair? Well, there are other surfactants which are milder. An example is cocoa glucoside, which is milder on the scalp since it is derived from plant-based ingredients such as coconut oil compared to common sulfates, which are chemicals. This one is a volumizing shampoo. Well, a volumizing shampoo usually contains wheat protein, which provides elasticity to the hair shaft. It also helps to expand the diameter of the hair shaft, and therefore you get the volumizing look. And lastly, we have the organic shampoo. What are these? To me, I feel that it is a term that's loosely used in the market. Many people think that the regular shampoo contains a lot of chemical, mm. while organic shampoo contains only natural ingredients. But that is not the case. Oh! Shampoos that are labelled organic may not be completely chemical-free. Some shampoos labelled organic may not be completely chemical-free as they would still contain other chemicals such as sodium benzoate for preservative purposes. I'm curious to know if I have been using the shampoo that fits my scalp and hair. Only one way to find out. A detailed scalp scan, since the condition of your scalp affects your overall hair health. <gasps> what is that? What is that? <laughs> How long has it been there? I want to cry, I can't even <laughs> So there's a scratch, yeah. It's like Antarctica. <laughs> Where are the penguins? <laughs> Yeah, so that's dandruff. You have dry, scaly, sensitive scalp with mm -hmm. dandruff. There's a lot of dry white flakes around the root of the hair, okay? And that usually will manifest as itch, uh, especially when you perspire, my friend gets a bit more itchy, oh. a bit more sensitive. How can these conditions be improved? So in some situations, changing the shampoo may actually help we improve the condition of the scalp and that could be because there is an allergy or an irritation to certain ingredients in the shampoo itself. So I would look out for a shampoo that is on the mouth side and taking into account the dandruff that we found for people with sensitive scalp, they might find that shampoos that contain the labels fragrance-free, paraben-free, sulfate-free might suit their scalp better and they might choose those products instead. I have been alternating between these two shampoos. This purifying one I've been using, I've learned that it has higher levels of surfactants for that deep cleanse. But now I know I need a shampoo that is not only gentle on my scalp, but also targets my dandruff issues. Which makes me want to find out, just what kind of anti-dandruff shampoo will get rid of these pesky flakes? As a teenager, I had dandruff. I remember there were times I would flip my hair and I would see white flakes falling onto my uniform. It was fascinating but also embarrassing. I thought I was rid of the problem, but turns out what I thought was just product buildup appearing on my head is dandruff. And I want to be rid of this problem once and for all. So I'm just wondering, what kind of anti-dandruff shampoo would be the most effective? Dr. Kerr sees over 20 patients with severe dandruff every month and she's about to reveal a fact that cannot be flaked off. 
do you know that regardless of anti-dandruff shampoo, these don't cure dandruff, it just controls it. You can control it such that you don't get flakes or itch, but you can't cure it such that it goes off completely and doesn't come back again. One of the factors causing dandruff is a yeast called Melisesia furfa, and we all have it. This yeast is harmless and feeds on the natural oil on our scalp. But when there is excess oil on our scalp, this yeast overgrows, resulting in an inflammatory response which then leads to excess shedding of the top layer of the scalp. So I used to have dandruff as a teenager, but then it just disappeared okay. one day. Okay. So can you explain to me what happened there? A lot of times, if you had it as a child or teenager, after puberty, it actually improves as your immune system matures. But you may find that sometimes if you're a little bit stressed out, you don't wash your hair frequently enough, it does come back a little, but maybe not as bad as previously. So there are shampoos out there that target dandruff. Which one's better at controlling the symptoms of dandruff? So this depends on the severity of your dandruff, mild, moderate or severe. So having zinc pyrotoyon and salicylic acid in the active ingredients list in regular shampoos would help in dandruff by reducing the inflammation and yeast. For organic anti-dandruff shampoos, some of them do contain salicylic acid as well, you have to read the label. Some of them also have zinc, but a lot of times they contain mainly essential oils in the form of tea tree oils, uh, jojoba oils. So tea tree oil also has anti-inflammation properties, but um, it doesn't target the yeast component so well. If you're looking for a shampoo that helps organic versus regular, the most important thing is to look at the ingredients list. If it has zinc, if it has salicylic acid, that would be good. Guess when it comes to anti-dandruff shampoo for my scalp, I'll be looking out for zinc pyrithion and salicylic acid. I have something to show you. Lately, I've noticed that my hair has been falling a little more than usual. My hairdresser tells me we drop around 50 to 100 strands of hair each day, but this is after just one hair wash. I'm not sure if this is normal. If you have a lot of growth in your hair, you have to take only one hair. This video shows a homemade remedy for hair fall using onions. It's racked up over 28.3 million views on TikTok. A quick search online also led me to an onion shampoo. Hey, hi, Muna. Oh, hi, hi Paz. Hi, Just hi. onion shopping. <laughs> I've seen that some food like onion in shampoos claim to prevent hair fall. Do they really help? I do have patients who come into the clinic and say, oh, I've been applying onion juice on my hair once uh, every night, once a week. That's what my mom tells me to do. Unlikely that you apply it, it's going to help hair fall or not. This is Faz Iqbal. She helps people with severe hair loss issues. Onion is present in a lot of dishes that we eat. It's one of the basic components you have when you're cooking. But whether it really prevents hair fall, no. But there are certain micronutrients that are available in a lot of food sources that promotes uh, hair growth and prevents hair fall because they are relevant to the overall hair health and hair structure. Oh, can you scalp. show me? Of course, let's go. When we talk about micronutrients that are essential, we focus on certain micronutrients like iron. Why? Because iron actually promotes blood circulation. The theory is that by promoting blood circulation, more oxygen will be carried to the cells that stimulate hair growth, thereby helping new hair to form. When we talk about uh, iron, I would say things like red meat, tofu or you know, dark green leafy vegetables, an example would be spinach. So how do you actually tell if you are deficient? So in our practice, we perform hair loss specific blood tests where we look at the micronutrient level that are relevant for overall hair health. Depending on the level of deficiency, I actually then prescribe a certain dosage of supplements. At some point, stop taking those supplements and convert to uh, good food sources. Other crucial micronutrients for hair growth include vitamin B12 found in eggs and milk, vitamin D found in mushrooms, and zinc found in sunflower and pumpkin seeds. 
But to know if you are deficient in these areas, you need to go for a blood test. Should I just go for anti-hair fall shampoos to prevent excessive hair fall? There's no such thing as anti-hair fall shampoo. There's no ingredient for shampoo that helps to promote hair growth or prevent hair fall. When we talk about hair fall or even hair loss, all that evolves around the follicular structure of your hair. And that is found a little bit deeper than how deep these anti-hair fall shampoo used topically can reach. Then why are anti-hair fall shampoos selling so much? Because I think people who sell shampoos know what the consumers want to hear. So take marketing with a pinch of salt. Hair needs to go through that natural cycle of shedding and regrowing. Mm. But there are times that you find it's excessive shedding. And that's because hairs that are not supposed to fall are falling. They go into what we call premature shedding. And that's usually as a result of stress. This is a temporary condition. It usually resolves itself after a month and a half to two months. This kind of thing does not lead to you going bald. So for that person who's shedding excessively, she may grab a shampoo yeah. and then use it for a month or a month and a half and decide, oh, it's actually stopped my shedding. But it's really not the shampoo. It was meant to stop at some point and regrow eventually anyway. So then, what exactly does an anti-hair fall shampoo do? Working like any other shampoo, cleansing your scalp. Doesn't have any superpowers, just cleanses to prevent the hair fall. No. All right. <laughs> Most of the time, excessive hair fall is just a temporary phase brought about by factors like natural hair growth cycle, your hormones, or even stress. But if you start noticing your hair falling in clumps and it persists even after two months, maybe it's best to seek professional advice to get to the root of the issue. I have found answers to my hair issues and uncovered the type of shampoo best for me. But I'm about to find out a troubling hair care routine that may also be aggravating my scalp issues. I don't know about you, but I usually only wash my hair every three to four days. I have actually tried washing my hair every day, but it makes it really frizzy and hard to manage. This is Monica. And the difference between us isn't just our hair length. She sometimes washes her hair three times a day. So I actually wash my hair every three or four days. But sometimes I can go a week without washing my hair. Is there really a need to wash your hair every single day? If your hair is straight, you have to wash it more often because our scalp do produce sebum right at the root. And because your hair is straight, the sebum gets spread so fast down the whole hair strand. So you find that the surface area of that oily part of the hair gets a bit overwhelming. If you have straight hair, you ought to wash your hair on alternate days. For clients that have got curly or wavy hair, you probably want to do hair wash once every three days. So you are definitely doing the right thing. Okay. But to wash your hair once every week, that is like pushing it a little bit, really. <laughs> so when I feel like my hair is so clean, I don't need to right. wash it. Because you're feeling your hair, you're not feeling your scalp. Yeah. Run your finger through your hair. Okay. If you can't feel the oil, put it under the light. Okay. If it's very reflective and it's very smooth, it's oily. Okay, let me try it. Mm. So, give my scalp a little massage and... Oh, how's it looking? It's reflective, so it indicates that there are traces of oil, but it's not overly reflective. Mm. There are actually a few factors that influence your washing schedule. First is oil. If you have an oily scalp, okay, that calls for more frequent washing. If you exercise all the time and you perspire a lot, so sweat calls for more regular washing. If you use styling products frequently and you're exposed to physical dirt, then that calls for more frequent washing as well. Because of the nature of my work, I yes. am exposed to hair styling products every day. So does that mean even with my curly hair, I have to wash my hair every day? Regrettably so, yes. Turns out, only washing my hair every three or four days encourages the overgrowing of yeast on my scalp. 
aggravating my dandruff situation. What else is there in a so, hair care routine? You ought to follow up with a conditioner. The choice of conditioner always depends on the condition of your hair. Mm. Depending on preference, um, some people would prefer to use a leave-in conditioner. You apply onto your hair after you towel dry and you do not rinse it off. Whichever conditioner that you choose, they are there to treat your hair, to replenish the oil that was stripped from the shampoo. You have frizzy little flyaway hair, you need to take it one step further. You need to do hair mask All right, to hair give mask. it that natural moisturiser. What does the hair mask do? So depending on your hair concerns, they are strengthening hair mask, they are hydration hair mask, they are moisturising hair mask. And also, it's very important to know, should I choose an oil for my hair or should I choose a serum for my hair? Yeah, what is the difference? Because I think I've used both thinking that they oil is also same. serum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Oil is a hair care products. So you want to add some oil to your hair so they continue to nourish it. And it, because when you apply oil onto the hair, it kind of laminates the hair, so the hair is not exposed to, to the environment. But oil being oil is oily. It's very suitable for your hair type because you have got voluminous hair. Okay. But a lot of people cannot take that kind of weight. And this is when serum comes in. Serum is silicone based. Serum will be a styling product. It, it, it doesn't care for your hair. It helps to smooth out the hair. It helps in detangling the hair. It helps to add shine. And that's what serum does, a styling products. So serum doesn't replenish it doesn't. your hair at all, whereas oil does. That is correct. I personally have gone through different kinds of shampoos before finding some that suits me. But what I found out is that finding the right shampoo for myself is only the first step to achieving healthy hair and scalp. I also need to wash my hair more often than I do now and include more of these in my diet for overall hair health.